Hello, my name is Sophia and welcome to my English Capstone project. For my project, I'm choosing to focus on sewing and video making. You're watching the video part right now where I'll show my process, and for the sewing part, I decided I will be making a dress. I chose to make a dress because I've never made something as big or as complicated as a dress before. Usually I only focus on smaller things like masks and bags, so I thought this would be fun to try. I found a great dress tutorial I will be following along with for this project. Here's a quick look at what the dress will hopefully look like when it's done. The YouTube video I'm following is from a creator called Paper STXR Designs. I'm currently stationed in my dining room where I'll be doing most of my work. Now on to supplies. For this project, I will need five yards of satin fabric, thread, scissors, corset boning, pins, and a sewing machine, of course. I already have my pins and scissors, so let's go order the rest. That was so quick, let's see what we got. Hello again, we're on the floor. This is most of my sewing stuff. I'm opening it up here so I can more easily show you guys everything. So first, here is fabric. It's a purple satin. I ordered six yards just in case I make a mistake because I've never worked with satin before. Um, for some reason, it's covered in glitter, so that's really great. But here you can see it's like nice and shiny. So we've got the satin. And then, so this is called corset boning. It is like kind of plasticky and it's gonna give some support to the back of the dress where the straps are gonna go. And then I already had thread, but I liked this kind of lavender purple thread, so I got that. And if I forgot to mention it before, I also got a zipper for the back and I got it in purple, so it matches the rest of the dress. Now that I have all my materials, the first step before I can start anything is I have to draw a pattern and I will be drawing this pattern based on the measurements from the video. I usually like to draw my patterns on newspaper, so I will be showing you guys that. Here's a screenshot of the measurements I will be using for the top. Because each step takes a lot of time, I've sped up a lot of the following video clips. Here's me measuring and cutting out the newspaper patterns and a look at what the finished patterns are like. I cut out both my pattern pieces. So I have this piece, this is going to be the middle. So I need two of these ones and this one goes for the sides and I need to cut out four of them. So I'm going to go cut them out. I pin the pattern down to the fabric so it doesn't move and then carefully cut all the way around. I just finished cutting out all of my pieces and as you can see, there's a not shiny side and a shiny side, which is important for later when we're sewing it all together. And also, what I was saying before, it's covered in glitter for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why, but it's all over. We've got six total pieces, and these are all for the front. The next step is to cut out fabric for the straps and also the skirt. Here's what the skirt should look like, and what I quickly realized is that my fabric isn't as wide as hers, so the skirt isn't as wide, but it ends up being okay. I laid my fabric down in half and pinned down the edge so it doesn't move. Here, I measured 7 inches from the corner to be the waist of the skirt. Then, my mom helped me to measure the length of the skirt about 50 inches all the way down. Now I can start cutting out the skirt. Again, I had to speed up these videos because the cutting took a long time. Once I cut out one, I laid it on top of the fabric to cut out a second piece. This part was tricky because I had to cut out the second piece using the first piece and not cut the first piece by accident. I finished cutting the skirt pieces. Looks kind of like this. So I cut two pieces that look like this and the second piece for the back, I cut in half down the middle and that's so I can put a zipper on. So now I'm going to figure out how to make the straps, which might take a little while, but I'll show part of that process. Now here comes my least favorite part, the straps. I measured two inches down the whole length of the fabric and then cut it out and then did that again for two straps. So I finished cutting out the straps. They're two inches about wide and like 100 inches long. Not a joke, I measured it. 
Um, and so I made two of them. They're gonna be for the back and it's gonna crisscross in the back. And also I'm gonna, when I cut it to the measurements it's supposed to be, the extra will become the loops also in the back. So now we finally get to start sewing. So I'm gonna pin them. I'm gonna pin them so that the shiny sides face each other and then I'll finally get to sew them. Hello, welcome to my sewing machine. And I finished pinning all the straps all the way down on both pieces. So before I can start sewing that, I have to thread my machine with the purple thread and create a bobbin. So I'll show you guys how to do that. There's not really an easy way to film this, but so here's where the thread goes and you have to follow the arrows. And now, once it's secure here, hold up on the thread and you hold up on the thread tight and you step on the pedal. And now I'm just gonna cut that. And now you let it spin for a little bit. My machine is all threaded and I'm just gonna test with a little strip to make sure everything is where it's supposed to be and it's running smoothly. So usually when I sew, I like to start with a couple stitches and then I go backwards a few and this locks everything in place and then go forward. And then at the end, usually go back a little bit. That wasn't a good sound. But um, yeah. I finished sewing all of the straps and I did like a zigzag stitch to hopefully stop it from fraying. Um, what I've learned so far about satin is it frays everywhere, these little fuzzies. So I'll clean that up later. So now I have to turn these really long straps inside out. And yeah, to do that, I need a safety pin. So I'm gonna do that. I saw this trick somewhere for turning really long straps inside out. I've never actually tried it, but we're gonna see. I tied a piece of yarn to the end of the safety pin. So now I put the safety pin in and, all right, so now um, to turn inside out, usually you move the safety pin through and as it pulls through, it takes, it turns it inside out because it's, um, it's too thin to uh, do it with just your hands. So I think when I get to the end of the yarn, I sew it across so that attaches it. And then once I get to the end of the whole strap, I should be able to easily pull it all the way through. Okay, I moved to the floor because it's a little more comfortable and I'm going to now um, pull the whole thing through. And this is why I don't like making straps. It's the turning inside out. This actually took me so long to not be the width I wanted and I had to do them all over again. And finally, I got them right. After many tries, I finally got my two really long strap pieces and I made a skinnier one for the loops in the back. And now I'm going to pin together my pieces for the front and yeah. I pinned my pieces together. As you can see here, I did the shiny sides together and that's so you don't see the seam on the outside. So I'm just gonna sew down this part here. Here is the almost completed top. There are two pieces that look like this. I cut the loops for the back and pin them two to three inches apart, and then the main strap in the crease of the front. Now that the two pieces are pinned shiny sides together, I will sew around the edge. I didn't get a video, but here is a look at the front and back of the top. There's one more step for the top, and that is adding corset boning. Corset boning is used to give structure to the back where the crisscrosses are. Now that I've finished the top, it's time to pin and sew the skirt. I pinned one of the half pieces to match up with the full piece, again, shiny sides together. I stitch all the way down the edge, and as you can see, the magnet there is helping to guide and keep a straight line. Then I did a zigzag stitch down the side to hopefully prevent fraying. 
Here's the skirt with the two pieces on and the next step is adding the zipper. This type of zipper is called an invisible zipper and it's usually used for clothing. I tried on the skirt and lined up the zipper with how much I needed to take in so it fits and then pinned. Here's a quick look at my sewing machine foot. I have to change it from a standard foot to a zipper foot. It clicks right into place. Here I sew the zipper upside down into place and then I turn it out so the seam will be nice and hidden. Then I do the same thing on the other side. Now that the zipper is done, I have to sew the rest of the way down and then zigzag stitch again too. And now the skirt and the top are both complete. Time to put them together to make a dress. I started by measuring and finding the middle of both the pieces and lining them up. Then I pinned them together along the edge. Again, as always, nice sides together for a nice seam. Inside seam and outside seam. Okay, so I finished both pieces of the dress, sewing it together, and here's the whole thing. And I tried it on, and right now it's really long. So the next step will be to um, measure and hem the bottom to the proper length so I don't trip on it. I tried on the dress with heels and estimated that 5 inches off all the way around would be good. Here I am measuring and pinning all the way around the bottom of the skirt and then I cut along my marked line. Pinning can take a long time. The next and final step is the hem. I am going to do a fourth of an inch hem all the way around. And here it is, the final dress on. I'm finally finished. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed watching my journey through this project. I really had a fun time making it and I hope to try to maybe make more soon. All right, bye.